All right. Um, first of all, I appreciate you all making the time here uh, this evening um, and accommodate um, the schedules of our program. Um, really appreciate you guys being here as always. Um, we have head coach Corey Close and student athletes Michaela Onyanweda and Charisma Osborne ahead of uh, the Pac-12 tournament. Uh, we will be playing either Washington or Colorado on Thursday evening. Um, so uh, coach, did you happen to have an opening statement tonight? It's March. Let's do this thing. So excited that you guys are with us. And uh, sorry, I was running from another meeting, but just really appreciative of all that you guys do. And we're excited that it's March mad madness and that we're getting a chance to compete. Great. Uh, we can uh, open it up to uh, questions uh, for anybody here. Feel free to use the uh, raise hand function. Uh, PJ, go ahead. Hi. Um, so this one's for you, Coach. Um, what do you do at this, you know, it's the second season, <clears throat> we're in March. How do you, do you change anything up? Do you have a different message for your team right now to get them ready and geared up for, you know, you win, you go on, you lose, you go home? Well, I've, I've actually really always loved conference tournaments because I feel like it's a dress rehearsal for that kind of mentality. You know, you just, it's, uh, it's, it's, this is it. There's an urgency about it. Um, I think everything about this year has been different. So I don't, I don't think, you know, making some slight tweaks here and there, I think it's important for us to stay as consistent as we possibly can. Um, you know, so for instance, I, we would have normally, if we played on Thursday, we would normally have left today. And um, but we made the decision with all of the COVID restrictions on the road that to keep them home and to keep them in their routine just a little bit longer. So, you know, is really important. So we just made some slight tweaks in what we're uh, able to do, but there's gonna be way more that's out of our control. But I think as much as we can stay consistent with our messaging that we've had all year, um, that, you know, our word for the year is perspective and we want to set our minds on the way that we want to focus on things every single day. We want to commit to bringing joy and intentionally growing every day. And so, you know, obviously everybody knows there's a little bit different edge to it and a little bit different intensity going into postseason. But, you know, that's what we've all been training for. We have a phrase in our program that the work done in the dark always gets revealed in the light. And we're excited to show what our work is, what kind of work we've been putting in. And so these young women have been really committed and uh, I'm excited for that. But I don't know, you know, I think everything's been different this year. So to make some slight tweaks, they probably didn't even remember that we would have normally gone earlier. So we're just, we're just going with whatever perspective uh, we can have to make sure our minds are in the right spot. And uh, we're gonna go do the best we can to control what we can control. Dave, go ahead. Well, I'm going to let Kahari go ahead because I think he has something to do later. So, all right, Kahari, right, yeah, are you, go ahead. All right, it's all good. It's all good. Uh, I want to ask Coach. So, uh, is this is this your favorite time of the year? You know, March. Is this something that you you, you speak on from day one? Like, yo, we go preparing for March. Yeah, I mean, I think that's you know, you're if you're a competitor, this is when you get. This is like the. This is like the the final exam, you know, but at the same time, it's also like so fun. It's just, uh, you know, so much has been sacrificed and so many people have worked so hard for us to be able to have this experience. But, you know, as a competitor, this is just awesome. Uh, you know, every little detail that you've been harping on all year, this is when it comes to the surface. This is when it really matters. And, you know, as a coach and as an educator and as a teacher, that's really what we want to do is help prepare them not only for March Madness, but also for life that uh, when the stakes are highest, they're the most prepared. When the, you know, when the lights are brightest, they uh, rise to the occasion, you know, and I think the list goes on and on. And that's really what we want is we want them for uh, a championship run as well as for the rest of their lives, for them to be prepared to give their best when their best is needed. And, and, and uh, charisma, you know, what, what's, what's some things that you, you, you know, you're looking forward to as going into the, to, to the Pac-12 tournament, uh, tournament as, a, as a sophomore, what's some things you're, you're looking to? Yeah, I'm super excited for the Pac-12 tournament. Um, me and my teammates, we've been talking about it for a while now, and we like where we're at um, and how we're playing right now. So I think we're all just really excited and Last year, we obviously didn't 
get the win, but we are really excited to come into the Pac-12 tournament this year and try to win so we can be the team um, at the end of the day making confetti angels. <laughs> that sounds great. And then, and then, and then Michaela, uh, you know, just you know, just knowing that last year that you guys did, um, you know, win obviously. Uh, you know, is that is that a, is that, a, is that a motivation? You know, this is your last year. You want to go finish out strong. Um, I wouldn't say that last year motivates me. Um, I think obviously this is a new year, new team and everything else. But I think what does motivate me is just being able to have the chance to really compete at the highest level. And especially I'm a senior. I want to go off on a high note. And I'm really um, just super grateful to be on this team this year. And so like Charisma said, like we fully expect to be able to make those confetti angels at the end of the day on Sunday. And I'm super, super, super excited, like more than usual to, to go out and compete um, for this tournament. Sounds good. And then just lastly, um, you know, you guys are doing the, uh, the, the, Bruin, the Bruins tabletop, you know, you know, a lot of more, a lot more women are doing, you know, sports and, and media, you know, uh, you see, see the chain from the Sparks is doing, you know, producing things of that nature. Is that, is that, is that, is that, is that like a trend that, you know, you know, women are going to play basketball and doing things on the side as well? Um, well, yeah, I guess. I mean, I think that it's good to see that athletes are super versatile, but we kind of started Bruin Table Talk just because we wanted to elevate Black voices, and we think that's super important uh, um, to do so. And so that's kind of like why we started it, but I definitely am an advocate for athletes doing things that other than their sport, for sure. All right, thank you all. Safe travels. All right, now we can go, Dave. Thanks, Ryan. Um, this is for Charisma and Michaela. Last year, you had a lot of momentum, and then the whole season just ran into a hard screen, came to an absolute stop. Does that make anticipation of this year even greater, of this tournament? Um, I think for me, it does, because last year was, like, my freshman year, at least for, like, the NCAA tournament. Like, I would never played in one yet before, so definitely I'm so excited to play in my first NCAA tournament this year, um, yeah. And yeah, I think the time is so fun during the tournament, like just being able to travel and play teams that you've never even probably seen or played before. So I think it's super fun. And obviously last year was, was pretty hard just for um, us as athletes. So I'm super excited to be able to compete um, and go as far as we can. Go to uh, PJ. Yeah, this one's for Michaela and Charisma. Um, what do you think that you guys sort of need to do um, this week? Because you are in the Pac-12 conference, the toughest conference in the nation, right? And how do you, what do you think are going to be the keys to you making those confetti angels at the end? I think at this point, um, well, we haven't played Colorado um, yet, but we've had experience with most of the other teams. And so I think at this point, it is really just about who can lock in and focus the best and the most. And especially having back-to-back -back games, it really is going to be about who really can lock in mentally. Um, it's all going to, it's going to weigh on us physically, like we know, just being, being able to have those back-to-back -back games. So I think definitely the key is who can lock in, um, who can execute a scouting report, who can execute their own personal things the best. Um, especially at this level where we've been playing for what, like 20 games so far. So people kind of know our stuff. So who can ex execute and be mentally locked in the most? Yeah, I agree with Mick. Um, definitely who can execute the best. Uh, we talked about it in practice. Like there's not as much like transition. It's really just a lot more like half court stuff. So just being able to execute on offense and then defensively doing that and just whoever is just together more um, in the tougher team. And, and what do you guys think? I mean, this is sort of that, um, you know, the awards are starting to come out now and all these lists for the end of the year. And, um, you know, what's that like for, for both of you to, to have these things flying out and you're still playing basketball? Um, I've always been one. I don't really pay attention to the awards, to be completely honest. Um, obviously, it's an honor to be able to you know, represent your school in the best way you can, but I've never really looked at them too far. I think I can speak for Charisma and I as well. 
Um, those things will come if they're supposed to, but I think right now we're focused just on getting better, um, being the best we can for our team. Thanks. Dave, go ahead. Thanks. Coach, this year the Pac-12 built in an off day on Saturday, so the teams that play in the final on Sunday don't have to play three or sometimes four days in a row. How big a change is that? It is a big change, and I'm really grateful for it. I think it was a wise move. Uh, just, you know, I think in the end, you want to mitigate risk. You want to uh, help your players not only um, be healthy to play your best basketball for the Pac-12 tournament, but also not to have lingering repercussions for the NCAA. And I thought that was a really good adjustment by the Pac-12. And and uh, obviously, it, it's really helpful to us. Um, but I thought it was just wise all the way around to put these young women in the best chance to be successful. And and to stay healthy for the NCAAs. Jumping ahead of myself a little bit, but you think of the NCAAs, the selection Monday, you're always trying to figure out where are we going? Where do we have to go next? What's our geographic? You know, the Bruins have ended up flying back and forth across the country so many times. How much of an equalizer is it this year that everyone's going to Texas? Well, it is a great equalizer. It definitely takes the guesswork out for sure. Um, but on the other hand, you know, we, I really miss sharing this experience with our fans and, you know, to not be able, they've earned the right to play at home for those first two rounds. And I think it's the right call. I'm really thankful that the, for the work that's been put in for us to be in this one regional location um, because health and safety and having a full tournament is our highest priority. But I do miss being able to have that, anticipation that we've earned the right to play at home and to share this experience with our with our great season ticket holders and donors and administration and all the people that uh, worked so hard and supported us so well but um, you know honestly that pales in comparison to be able to have a season right that to be able to have an NCAA tournament which we which was taken from uh, from these student athletes last year so you know that that maintains the highest priority uh, for us and so we're really thankful for it but definitely is a different kind of experience. I don't think the seating makes as much a difference as it normally does. Everything's going to be a neutral site. Um, you know, I think it's much more having to do with matchups than it is your seed line. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I like our chances and I'm, I'm excited for us to be able to play our best and in every game is going to be a neutral game. And I think that's going to be exciting. John, go ahead. Yeah, um, this is for anyone who wants to answer, but um, I know you guys see Arizona in that uh, potential second round for you guys matchup. Is it kind of difficult to stay, like I guess this is for um, just basic tournament question, but to stay focused on the game in front of you as opposed to, you know, looking ahead to the Arizona matchup and then potentially a Stanford matchup afterwards, or what's that like? I would say no, just because especially we, we, obviously have not played Colorado. So I don't, we obviously don't want to assume the result of that game um, that we're going to play, but we haven't played Colorado. So to, to go ahead of that and um, kind of skip over that would kind of be doing a disservice to them. And we know in the Pac-12, like it's, everybody is, is, is good. And everybody, especially playing us, it seems that we always have a target on our backs and people, we always get people's best games. And so I don't think so. I think it could be easy to do that just because we haven't played um, Arizona since the second game of the season. But I think right now we're really just focusing on what we can do with what we have as far as whether we're gonna be playing Colorado or Utah. I'm sorry, Colorado or Washington. Go back to uh, PJ. Yeah, um, coach, I know that you have certain rituals on game day. You go for a walk and, and most days you do your gratitude um, thing on, and Instagram, and I listen to all of them. I think they're wonderful and, and a lot of fun. Um, is there anything that either of you two, Michaela or Charisma, that you do on game day that's sort of your ritual or something that you do that you want to do this week in Las Vegas? <clears throat> TikTok. <clears throat> <laughs> Um, yeah, I usually do a TikTok um, before each game day. Um, yeah, that's probably like my main thing that I do. Um, that's super just like fun right before the game. Yeah. I don't really have any. Um, I shower before every game. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's probably it. I don't really do, do much, honestly. 
You know, it's so interesting too, PJ, just on that. I remember when Michaela was a freshman, uh, she wasn't in the starting lineup at this time. And the uh, video jumbotron in our home games would start to go. And all of a sudden she is like dancing. And <laughs> I have a video. You do have a video. It's, it's incredible. And I remember my first reaction was to be like, focus up, come on, you know, like, and then, you know, she just would come out there and she was focused every time and she'd kick people's butt. Oh yeah. There we go. Okay. <laughs> yes. On cue. Oh yeah. You're just going at it right there. Okay. So I like it, Mick, you should send that to me. Um, but the reality of that is that, you know, I think every player, one of the things that we've really tried to teach them is that you have to find a way. Do you need to get more hyped? Do you need to be more calm? Do you need to um, make a TikTok or do you need to take a nap? You know, whatever that is to find your routine and be responsible to get yourself ready to play your best for the sake of the team. And, uh, you know, actually Michaela's taught me a lot because as I watched that, that was obviously good for her because she is very uh, uptight naturally before a game, but she, that sort of loosened her up and had some fun and made her smile and actually made her play better. So I'm okay with whatever their ritual is or non-ritual as long as they're responsible to get themselves ready. And does anybody have any weird food thing that they like to eat or or is anybody really you know um sort of delicious. orderly or anything like that before a game like every like you put your shoe your right shoe on first and you tie that before you have to put, put your left one on anything like that for either of you guys we're sort of boring yeah the only thing that <laughs> i do which i started this year is like I usually take beet juice before the game, but that's not that exciting. So, <laughs> yeah, I don't really have any superstitions. I used to in high school a lot, but I realized in college, like it really doesn't matter that much. So not really. How about you, coach? No, I, you know, honestly, you, you are it sort of got me dialed up. I, I pretty much after I have some variants before uh, we start our shoot around routine, but pretty much we go uh, shoot around uh, or film and that kind of thing. And then I work out uh, whether it's a walk or whether it's, you know, do something. And then I, you know, shower and get myself ready. Um, you know, my faith is really important to me. And when the players leave the locker room, um, when the first time I stay and just pray to myself. So that's my only thing. That's pretty much the ritual, I guess, that I do pretty much before every single game. Any other questions? Yeah, John, go ahead. Yeah. And then just uh, one more for coach. Uh, I, I know last year you talked about, um, you know, you're going up against USC in the first round and uh, they didn't have much to lose since um, they were in a tournament team and it was the last game of the season. And then again, this year, um, Colorado, Washington, probably not tournament team, probably their last games of the season. How do you kind of prepare for facing a team with nothing to lose? Is that kind of worrisome at all? Well, I think, you know, anything can happen. And that's why they call it March Madness, right? But I think that's where discipline comes in, right? You just have to really um, make sure that your mind is focused on the things under your control. I think uh, Michaela said it really well, and so did Charisma, just that who can really lock in mentally, who can execute their game plan, who can uh, really be focused on the things that make that particular team play to their strengths. And so I think that's always going to be the case, right? Um, that your quarterfinal game is probably going to be against a team that has nothing to lose and, you know, anything can happen, which adds, of course, to the drama and to the fan, uh, you know, excitement. But from a coach's perspective, um, you know, I think it's a great ex uh, example of saying, hey, look, that is all true. Anything can happen and anyone can get hot. And obviously, you know, Colorado, if they were to beat Washington, they're one of the teams, the only two teams that beat Stanford and us being the other one. I mean, they have a lot of talented players. Um, but I think all those things are out of our control. What's under our control is, you know, we know about them. We study them. We know how we play to our best. What do we need to take away? What do we need to play to? And I think trying not to get distracted by all those other things and worry about it. 
because honestly, we just don't have control over it. And I know Coach Wooden had a phrase that said, if you focus on things that are out of your control, that'll adversely affect the things under your control. And I really do think that's a, um, a very important key to uh, being successful in March is to set your minds on things that are under your control. Dave? Uh, I, I don't want to look backwards too much, but I just want to say a couple of quick things. Michaela, six threes. Have you ever felt like that on a court before? <laughs> no, I don't know what it was. I was just feeling it. I don't know, but yeah, I don't know. I've never felt like that. I, I was actually happy. I don't really celebrate too much on the court, but I was very happy and I was celebrating, especially against USC, like their arrivals. So. It was Can you make sure you're feeling it on Thursday too? I'd appreciate that. I'm going to cry. <laughs> hopefully, it's, hopefully it's still there. <laughs> Charisma, uh, right before you had nine assists, I said on the air, if she makes a good pass, somebody better make the layup. And then Dominique Darius makes this flying layup. Did you see the bench when that ball went in? I did not see the bench, no. Oh, your bench went crazy. Did you know you had hit the triple double on that point? I had, I think I knew I needed one more assist. So yes, I could tell by the teammates on the court how excited they were for me, so. That is something I have to just say about this team. They celebrate each other extremely well. And whether it's Charisma's triple-double or Michaela's six threes or Lindsay going four for five from the three-point line or just even the whole, I got so many text messages about how uh, the team celebrated our seniors on that senior night. And I, I just think that speaks to the selflessness that in Michaela really sets the tone for that, that it's really up all about the team. And we're going to celebrate the things about the team. And individual things along the way are great. Um, but it's all under the umbrella of what's best for the team. And, and so I really have enjoyed watching them celebrate each other and lift each other up and call each other up to the greatness that's within them. And uh, it's something that I really admire about this group. And I will, I continue to enjoy and I will remember for a long time. Great stuff. Anyone, anyone else here? Any other questions? All right, we can wrap it up there. Um, appreciate, appreciate you all stopping by, um, ahead of our, ahead of our game on Thursday. Um, feel free to reach out if you need anything before then. Um, and, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll catch you all in, in Vegas. Oh, and the zoom links for our respective press conferences, uh, will be distributed. The PAC 12 is handling that themselves. Um, so whenever I get that information, I'll be passing it along to all of you. Um, yeah. So with that, I'll say, uh, good evening and, uh, appreciate you all being here. Thank you, everybody. Thank y'all. Have a good night. Thank you.